Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 in building a simple Dropbox clone using Fresh.js. Last video, we've set everything up and started working on the UI. In this video, we'll try and wrap up most of the UI changes. Currently, we only have a layout component that displays the navbar and a text saying Hello Fresh. Let's add the modal button, which will prompt us to create a folder. We'll create two components to handle the modal. First one will be the button, and the second will be the modal itself. And for both cases, since we have interactivity, we'll use islands. For the button, let's create a file under the island folder called createButton.tsx. We want something to manage the state of our modal mainly when we click on the button we should display the modal and when we click on the cancel button in the modal we should hide it to do this we'll make use of signals to pass a boolean to our button and later on we'll pass that same signal to the modal so that whenever one of those island component updates the signal the other component will be aware of the change and will adapt accordingly let's import the signal type from pReact. We need an interface which takes a signal of boolean type called isOpen. We then create our button island and get the create props as a parameter. I'll add a helper function called OpenModal which will set the value of our isOpen signal to true. We can now return our JSX element and we'll have a button in it. For the button styling, you can get it from GitHub repo uh, in the description, or you can do what I usually do and head over to one of the free Tailwind CSS components uh, website like Flowbyte or HyperUI and then just select buttons, pick whichever button fits your need and customize it accordingly. So for my use case, I wanted a button with an icon in front of it. So I just selected one of those and then just updated the CSS class to make sure that it has a blue border, a blue background, and remove the rounded corners for it. The only important part in our button component is the onClick method. Uh, we need one and it should use the helper function openModal so that we can modify the signal. This will let the modal component, which we'll create next, know that it should show itself. With this, our button is all set. So let's create the modal. Under the island folder, we can create a new file called createModal.tsx. Same as the button component, we import the signal type. We then create a props interface that will have a signal of type boolean called isOpen. We can then export our component and make sure to get the create props interface as a parameter. Similar to the button component, we'll create a helper function. This one is going to be called close modal and is going to set the value of our signal to false. Then we check the current value of the is open signal. If it's false, we display nothing by returning empty span. Otherwise, we return a JSX element. We want our HTML to look like a modal, so we'll have a div that's fixed in the middle of the screen with the Z index set to 50 to make sure that it's on top of any other HTML on the page. We'll also have a black background with 50% opacity. This will give the background a darker feel, putting more, putting more focus on our modal. Next is another div 
to represent where the modal content should live. It will have a white background, rounded corners, and some shadow. You can now put whatever you want in that div and you'll have yourself a nice modal. We want a title telling us to create a folder and a form with a method set to post. We'll have a label called folder name and an input of type text with the name equal to folder. This is followed by a div to represent our action buttons. The first one is the cancel button with a red background and it uses the on click method of close modal. The next one is a submit button with a blue background. For now, our submit button won't do anything, but later on we'll add the logic to actually create a folder whenever we hit submit. Our modal is now ready. Let's make use of it and the create button component inside of the layout component. So we'll head over to our layout. We need to use the use signal import. This will let us create a signal. We then import both the create modal and create button components that we just created. In our layout component, we create a constant called create modal is open, which uses the use signal by creating a Boolean signal set to false. We don't want to show the modal by default. Before the props children, we'll create a div just to add some top margin. And inside of that div, we can put our create button, passing it create modal is open uh, signal as the is open param. And at the bottom completely, we can add our create modal component, doing the same thing, passing it the create modal is open signal to the is open param. And now if we hit save and head back to our browser, we can see that we have a button. And if we click on it, it opens our modal. And whenever we click elsewhere, nothing changes. But if we click on cancel, it hides the modal. Next, we're going to move to our drag and drop zone. Similar to the modal, we need interactivity. This means that we'll need an island. I'll create under the island folder a new file called file upload.tsx. We can export our file upload component. JSX allows us to create handler based on different mouse events. This lets us control what happens if we double click on a div, for example, or if we want to move a div. In our case, we mainly want to handle when we drag over something inside our div and when we drop it in our div. We'll need two helper functions for that. The first is going to be called hand on handle drag over or handle drag over. This function takes an event and all we want to do for now is prevent the default behavior. Then is the handle drop function, which will do the same thing, except uh, we'll take a drag event, we'll prevent the default behavior. And in the case that there is a data transfer object, we'll simply console log the first file. So this would represent whenever you drop a file into that div, uh, we should then see the information of that file in our console. We also need a third helper function, which is unrelated to the drag and drop. This is if we click on the upload file section instead of dropping something we still need to tell it what to do. So we create a function called upload file and we'll console log the file for now as well. Later on, we'll make an API call to one of our own API routes, which will handle the upload logic and dealing with Superbase. We can finally return our JSX element. We'll have a div with the MX Auto and some top margin. 
then we'll have a div which will make use of our drag and drop handlers by calling the on drag over handler and on drop handler. Next is adding the nice rectangle with dashed lines. For this, we can go to one of those nice Tailwind CSS websites. I found one on Sailboat UI, which I kind of liked. So you can check out the code and simply copy it and paste it in here. And then you can always update it based off of your needs. The main thing that we want to make sure that we have here is that the input file, whenever on input event is triggered, we want to call our on upload file. So that way, whenever we, tr we click on our div and pass it a file, we want it to automatically trigger the upload file logic so that it could upload it to Superbase without us needing to click on a submit button or another action to actually trigger everything. And that's all we need for the drag and drop component. We can now add this to our layout component. If we go to our layout, right under the create button div, we can add our file upload component and make sure to import it from our island. And now if we hit save and take a look at our browser, we should now see the upload or drag and drop. So if we inspect, go to console, and I'll try and drag and drop an image file into here, we should see our file being logged to the console. So the name of the file, when it was last modified, the size, the type, etc. One last thing I want to do in this video is create the UI for the table that will represent our folders. This component doesn't need to be dynamic, so let's just create a new file under the component section called tablefolder.tsx. We'll start by exporting our component followed by returning the JSX element. The first thing we'll have is a div with some top margin, and then we'll have the table element with full width and some white background and gray text. The body will have a gray border only for the top. And we can add some static rows. Later on, we'll replace those with dynamic values based off of then OKV. Uh, so we'll store our folders and files in the database and we'll retrieve them and display them here dynamically. But for now, let's just use some static data. Uh, the rows will use flex, justify between, center the items and add some hover effect by changing the background color on hover. There's only two columns. The first will have a link so that when we click it, it redirects us somewhere. For now, it'll only redirect us home. Inside of our link, we'll have an image. This will let us know if it's a folder or a file. You can get some free icon images uh, on icons8.com. I just went to popular and I selected the file and folder ones and downloaded them. Then inside of your project, just place them in the static folder section. So that so now we have our file and folder images here and we can make use of them in our components. So after the image, we have a span with the name of the folder or file. In this case, we're representing a folder. The second column will have a action button which would delete the folder or file. For now, it's doing nothing. 
I'll create another folder by copy pasting this and then just changing the name to something else. In this case, it's cool. And then I'll create a file underneath using the file image. We're done with the table UI. We can add that in the index route instead of currently displaying hello fresh we can take our table folder component make sure to import it and click save and now we should be able to see if we head to our browser we should now see some folders and text files with the delete button on the right. We now have a nice looking UI and we're ready to get started with Deno KV in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.